That's good. Good color right there. I like this color. Could you introduce yourself and tell us where we are today? You are at the studio of John Ahern, and we are at the corner of 138th Street and 3rd Avenue in the Bronx. You could sit in a chair in this studio for 10 years and never have anyone knock on your door. Where I was working before, it was more of a public place where I'd just be there working and people come and go as they please. Some people, uh, they get a lot of uh, excitement and inspiration from being around others. That's part of the reason I do the kind of work that I do is because I like to do a kind of artwork where I'm in some kind of play with other people. The way I got involved with dedicating my life to the Bronx was because there was a newly formed uh, artist experimental art center called Fashion Moda that was very close to where we are right now. I started going every day and casting people in the, in the uh, front window. David Ortiz, who you see right here, came one day and he said, I want to make the most exciting cast that you ever made before. And David got so excited, he went back home and he told his cousin, whose name is Rigoberto Torres, about the process. Now, Rigoberto Torres is a very serious, reflective young man who was 18 at the time. He came to Fashion Moda and we started doing casting together and we made a partnership, which is still happening today. We're all much older now, but, um, but we've done uh, many projects in the Bronx together. So how do people prepare themselves to get sculpted? I mean, casting. Well, um, do you like to swim? I think that swimming might be very much like being cast. The, the real issue with being cast is how do you feel about controlling your breathing? How long does the cast stay in like a person? You understand that they have straws in their nose. That's the breathing part, right? And then um, I, I take this gel, which is like a, a alginate uh, a gel, the kind that dentists use for uh, casting your teeth. And you mix it with water, and then you just pour it on the person's face, right? And this comes out like a very heavy cream on their face, and then it sets up. What would you say is the most difficult cast that you ever had to do on someone? When you say difficult, right? Usually the real issue is how is the person feeling? Mm -hmm. Not me. It's the person I'm working with. Because technically I'm just doing uh, kind of a very simple artistic process, but how that person is doing, now that is what really matters, how they feel. Mm -hmm. What is the most interesting cast that you've ever done? Hmm. Or maybe your favorite? I think the one I'm working on right now is my favorite one. I happen to be working on one right here and now, which I think just I finished this afternoon, which is a uh, full figure of my son, Carlos. When I see him around the house, he's always showing up uh, as Spider-Man in the Spider-Man identity. And he'll look at me and then I say, Carlos, how are you feeling? He goes, this is not Carlos, this is Spider-Man. You know? <laughs> Lately, I've been doing a new casting technique. So you cast me like this all around and then when the cast is ready, when the mold is ready to come off me, what I do to myself is I cut the jacket all the way around in the back so that the jacket comes out in the mold. So you can see how the back is all cut out here because he had to sort of pull out of the, the thing. That's how we did the Spider-Man costume. What do you think your medium allows you to do that is different from painting or sculpture? I really cheat when I make these sculptures because really sculpture is said to be all about creating form. But I like to paint form onto the piece. So in a way, I'm making paintings on sculptures. So how do you decide um, what gets painted and what doesn't? I try not to be too clever about the artwork that I do. I try to keep it very simple, very straightforward. So I pulled the shirt off and it left this impression right here. And to do the orange, it was pretty much cadmium orange uh, medium right out of the tube. Did you have a question? Uh, how do you deal with the eyes open and the mouth open? 
when you say mouth, you don't mean smiling. You mean like how do you cast all the way down to their throat? Some very brave individuals who have a, a need to prove themselves forever to history have done casts where we pour the material right into an open mouth cast. There's a gag effect. When the stuff sets up, you go, and it just sort of comes right out of the mouth right there. So we have it all cast, the teeth and everything. You see that? The eyes are the opposite thing. All people that are cast have their eyes closed, always. There's no such thing as casting with an expression in your eyes. That's all done later. He had his eyes closed when we did this. Now, in, in my house, by myself, I was carving the eyes open to make them look like his eyes are open. Does um, music affect you on how you create your art? Yes, and it can be very inspiring and helpful. And if I really want to be special, I might not listen to anything, you know? But that means that, you know, you're so sensitive that you don't want anything to affect you. Yes? What do you want your audience to take with them with your sculpturing? Experiencing art is, has so many different dimensions and levels. Some people might look at something and it may remind them of something in their life, someone that they know. Someone else might be thinking more about some art history or somebody might be thinking about um, current events, things going on around them in, in the city and maybe it reminds them of that.